Hello everybody, welcome back to another video on the channel. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make this clean pet follow system. So let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that we need to do is actually get our pets. And I have um, six pets here, so I'm just going to paste them in. Um, they are just copies of each other. The reason you can't see them is because they're just like in each other, <laughs> like this. Um, but I'll just kind of drag them out here. So here are my six pets. Um, you can have as many pets as you want. This is a modular system, meaning this will work for as many pets, whichever pets that you would like. Now, there is a couple things that you need to do to set up for these pets. The first thing that you need to do is give it a primary part. And usually for a pet, you want to give it the primary part as the head or the main part of the pet. So in this case, it's the head because it's the biggest part. Um, so you just select your model, primary part. I just selected the head. Um, but once you do that, you want to select all the parts in your pet. And you want to make sure can collide is off, anchored is off, and you want to turn on massless. And once you turn these on, um, the pet will be at an optimal state where we can code it and make it follow the player. So once you set up the pet by um, doing the steps aforementioned for every single pet, what we can do is go inside of the replicated storage, insert a new folder. I'm just going to name this pets. And I'm going to select all of these pets and just put it into the folder just like that. And once we've done that, we can just go ahead and start scripting right away. All right, so what we're going to do is make a new local script instead of the starter player scripts. I'm going to name this pet follow client. And what we can do is start coding. So we need four services. We need the player service, replicated storage, run service, and we need the tween service. So service, game get service, tween service, just like that. After that, we need to get a couple more things. We need the player, players that local player. We need the character, it's going to be player.character, or we're going to wait, so player.character added on wait. We need the humanoid root part, so local HRP is character, wait for child, humanoid root part. And let's get the pets folder. So local pets folders, replicate storage, wait for child pets. And let's make a new table of all of the active pets. Once we do that, we're actually going to make some settings. So local radius is equal to a number. So the radius is just going to be how far the pets are from the player. I like six, but you can choose any number that you desire. And local hover height is going to be one. So how high or how low they hover. Local tween time is 0.2. So kind of how much, how long the delay is before um, updating, you know, the current position. Local hover speed is equal to two. So how fast the bobbing happens. And the hover amplitude is how high they bob. So I'm going to set 0.25. Of course, you can change these as you wish. Once we do that, we need to create a symbol function to spawn the pet. So this is going to be a pet model and an index. What we're going to do is clone this pet. So pet clone is equal to pet model clone. We'll say pet clone dot parent is sorry pet clone parent is the workspace, and local pet root is equal to pet clone dot primary part. So this is why it's important that we have the primary part set up in all of the pets. After that, we're going to ensure we have clean movement. So for underscore part in pet clone, get descendants do. If part is a base part, we will set the part dot can collide to false and the mass list to true. Now, if you already did this, this really does not matter, but this is there just, just in case. Once we do that, what we're going to do is the second we start the animation, we're actually just going to anchor the primary part. So anchor is equal to true, just like that. 
just for the primary part. And now we're going to spread the pets into a circle. So local angle is, and now there's going to be some math, math.rad, which is radius, index minus 1 times 360, which is degrees, divided by hashtag pets folder colon get children, just like that. So we're equally um, positioning the pets in a circle. Once we do that, we need an offset. So local offset is going to be vector3.new. We're saying math.cosine of the angle, 0, and math.sine of the angle, and we'll multiply this by the radius. So this is going to create a bit of offset. Now we're going to set up the start position. So local start position is the humanoid root part, a position plus the offset, plus the vector 3, dot new, 0, hover height, 0. And we'll set the primary part C frame to be C frame dot new, start position, and HRP dot position, just like that. Once we do that, we want to save this to the table of active pets. So active pets, and we'll get the in index of active pets plus one is equal to a new table. We'll set the model to the pet clone, the offset to the offset, and the index to the index, just like that. Once we do that, we're going to create another function. So local function spawn all pets, and this is not going to take anything in. So this is just going to spawn in all of the pets. For this, what we'll do is reset the current pet. So for underscore pet data in iPairs active pets, if pet dot data or pet data dot model, then we're going to set pet data dot model destroy, just like that. So we're going to destroy that model, and we'll set the active pets to a clean table. After that, we're going to spawn in all the pets. So for i pet in i pairs pets folder, we'll then get children do. If this pet is a model and we have a primary part on it, then we're just going to spawn in the pet, passing through pet and the index. Awesome. So now that we've done that, we're actually going to make the tween. So what we're going to do is run service dot render step colon connect function for underscore pet data in pairs active pets so loop through all the pets local model is the pet data dot model local offset is equal to pet data dot offset local pet root is equal to model dot primary part local index is pet data dot index and what we're gonna do is check if we have the pet root so if pet root and we have the humanoid root part local time is just going to be a current time so tick local hover offset now we're going to have a lot of math here so local hover offset is going to be a math dot sign time times the hover speed plus the index and we'll multiply this by the hover amplitude so if you know uh, stuff about math, the hover, um, or sorry, the sine function is just going to be this um, wave looking um, function. And so the wave will have a top. So that's when the pet is, you know, in the air. And then it will have a bottom. And so that's where the pet is going to be on the bottom. I'll probably have a visual in front of you right now, just so you can kind of understand the math behind this. But once we do that, we're actually going to create the target position. So local target position is HRP dot position plus offset plus vector three dot new zero hover height plus hover offset and zero. Now we'll set the target C frame to be C frame dot new target position and HRP dot position. Just like that. Once we do that, we'll just create the tween. So local tween info is equal to tween info dot new tween time enum dot easing style dot sign enum dot easing direction dot out. We'll create the tween. So local tween is tween service colon create 
pet root between info and we want to change the C frame to be the target C frame just like that. And finally, we'll just play it. So tween play just like that. Awesome. So now that we've done that, we actually need to call the spawn all pets function and this will work. But after this, what I want to do is in your game, you'll probably have an inventory system. And so in the inventory system in the back end, you're just going to add the pet into the folder. So let's make it in which this will always update when you add something into the pets folder. So just at the bottom, we'll just say pets folder. Whoops, pets folder dot child added call and connect function. Let's just wait one second or sorry, point one second and spawn all the pets and pets folder dot child removed call and connect function will just spawn all of the pets again. So now that we've written this, we can actually save the game and test this out. So let me get into the game. And when we test it out, as you can see, we have all the pets here surrounding us and they are hovering in this nice wave effect, which just looks really nice. And of course, as I jump, you can see that little offset here and that weight, the extra 0.2 second weight, which is nice. And what I can do is in the replicate storage, if I delete all the bulls, you can see that it cleanly updates instantaneously with three pets. I can put them back in and now they're all here, which is awesome. But yeah, guys, that's going to be it for this video. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.